This is my second off-topic video. I used to write a blog. I mean, I still write a blog, but I post on it very sporadically. I think that a lot of people prefer to watch videos, or at least I do. And because this one might be a little bit long, I am going to post it on my blog. I'm also going to be giving this as a speech later this month, but I am going to post it as a video on my channel as well under off-topic. Advice like youth is probably wasted on the young was a column written in the Chicago Tribune by Mary Schmidt. Schmick. Schmick. S-C-H. S-C-H-M-I-C-H. How do you say that? Smack? 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 Anyways. It was published on June 1st, 1997. I have committed most of it to memory. The reason I've done this is that a little while later, Baz Luhrmann came out with the spoken word, wear sunscreen. If you haven't heard it, I suggest you do. I'll put a couple links below where you can find it. It's amazing. I'm gonna steal a few words from Mary to start this off. Hopefully, I'll be able to switch into my own stories and my own words instead of just continuing what she wrote. Mostly, I just pull out that monologue for parties. I also do a little rent and a little Shakespeare. Ladies and gentlemen, wear sunscreen. If I could offer you one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. The long-term benefits of sunscreen have been proved by scientists, whereas the rest of my advice has no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience. I will dispense this advice now. I've often been told by parents who watch me coach their kids, you should be a teacher. And on the outside, I say, nah, teaching's not really for me. I don't want to work that hard. But on the inside, teaching? Why do you want me to have a horrible life? Why do you want me to be underappreciated, overworked, overwhelmed, and underpaid? Oh God, I choose life. I will never be a teacher. I choose life. I am a little eccentric. That's why I keep that part on the inside. I'm not quite that dramatic in my head, but my inside voice does live in a musical. My father was a teacher. I know, more than most do, the dark underbelly of teaching. It's not all weekends and summer vacations. But I also know that teachers change lives. They save lives. I know how much my dad has positively affected the kids in his classroom. I know the teachers that have helped me. I know the ones that have saved my life. My mom died when I was six. I don't really remember much of that time, but I do remember my grade one teacher and him letting me build a fort in the classroom and letting me sit in it when I needed to. I remember how he made me feel and how I feel now when I think about him and that time. But I am not a teacher, not in a classroom anyways. I have a much easier job when I work with kids. I have 12 to 15 highly motivated teenage boys who are all trying to impress me and they don't want to get kicked out because sometimes I do kick them out. Well. I kicked one kid out one time. You only have to do it once and then I get it. I decided to break down my experiences into that of a player, a student, and a coach. And think about a few things that I'd want my younger self to know. I'll start with myself as a student. There are a few things I wish I could tell the younger version of myself. The first would be get a better math tutor. My father was a math teacher and my mother was an accountant. Guess what the only subject I ever failed was? I was always overwhelmed by numbers, and I still am. I've actually recently found a few math tools. I want a math teacher, so I'm gonna be working towards getting more comfortable with numbers, but be that as it may, I still suck at it now. Maybe a year or so ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who is a math teacher. Now, I've also recently spoken to her about this conversation, and I'm not sure it's exactly how I remember it, but I'm gonna tell you my version of it. It's so annoying, she said in reference to teachers passing the buck on students who clearly didn't understand the material. I can see that they don't get it. I don't understand why they just don't ask for help. I looked at her and I said, hey, I was one of those kids. I didn't get it and I didn't ask for help and I can tell you exactly why. Because if I were to ask for help for something I don't understand, I would get the explanation in the exact same way as the first time, still not understand, feel stupid about it, and feel even worse because now everyone in the classroom knows I don't understand. Instead, I tried to figure out what I could and if I passed, that was great. A 51 was good enough for me. I wish I'd had a math teacher who catered to my learning style. Hopefully, I will soon. The next thing I would say to my younger self would be, it's okay to be a slow reader, just keep reading. Currently, I am addicted to audiobooks and I have been since I was a child. I consume them on an obsessive level, but I don't read very much. I absorb information very slowly off the page. People find that surprising because I've written a book and I tell them I wrote my novel for people who read like me, for people who feel accomplished when they turn the page quickly. So I have short chapters and lots of white space. I have short sentences and I try and be as direct as possible in my wording. You'll get through my book fast. That's what I loved when I was reading. I felt accomplished turning the page, getting through chapters, finishing books. I would tell my younger self to try and avoid the voice in your head that's telling you other people notice how slow you're reading. They don't notice. The voice that would interrupt me while I was reading to tell me how stupid I was for reading so slow. Try to ignore that. Try to keep reading. Because believe it or not, practice does make you better at things. This leads me into what I would say to myself as a player. Probably the biggest thing would be you can get better at anything. Anything if you practice. I was five foot nine when I was 12. So when I started playing basketball, I was relegated to the post. Basketball has 
changed a lot in the last 15 years. Now, everybody is trained at almost every position. Back then, it wasn't that way. I was always a back to the basket five. I was always told, don't dribble, don't shoot, find a ball handler, get closer to the rim. I only realized 10 years after I started playing basketball that though coaches were telling me, don't dribble and don't shoot, I was understanding you can't dribble and you can't shoot and you will never be able to do those things. Somehow, in my mind, shooting and dribbling became a talent, not a skill. Something that was innate, not something that was learned. I wish I could tell my younger self to ignore the invisible lessons society forces on us. Not only the ones that told me I couldn't shoot, or I couldn't dribble, but the ones that told me that I was ugly because my hair wasn't straight, or I was stupid because my best subject was gym. As if using your body isn't as much as a skill as math. Sure, some people have a natural inclination to some things, but I think there are a few things in this world that you cannot improve upon if you practice. And as for myself as a coach, well, I was lucky. I think it's because I had learned about society's invisible lessons that I had learned how important language was and how so often the medium was the message. My team, in a frantic moment in the game, would not calm down if I was screaming at the top of my lungs, calm down. They were gonna feel what I was feeling. If I was calm, they would be calm. If I had confidence in them, they would have confidence in themselves. I learned through my many years of coaching that if I asked the kids questions instead of feeding them answers, they tended to retain more of the information. And when they were right, or close to being right, or kind of on the right track, or a little bit in the right direction, I made sure they knew it. I made sure that they knew they were contributing something. Because the one thing that all of this has in common, all of these things that I would tell my younger self, is esteem. It's all about building it, maintaining it, having it, how we get it, how we keep it, it all comes down to esteem. It's all about confidence. Where I'm actually giving this talk in person is going to be in Anaganish. It'll be my first time there and my first time in Nova Scotia. When I started thinking about going there, it's because I wanted to visit a few of my good friends. One of them set up this talk and I told him, I have nothing of value to say. They're not going to learn anything from me. What can I tell these people? He said, I think you do have value. I think you do have a story to tell. And we talked it out. See, even now I struggle with esteem, but it is something we can instill in the people around us and hope that in turn, they instill it in us. I'd like to finish with a few things that I keep reminding myself. Goals or hopes, wishes. I wish that I was on my phone less and that I wasn't listening to an audiobook all the time because the real reason I do that is I'm not comfortable being alone in my head. I wish I was more comfortable being alone. My dad tells me that started when my mom died, but I couldn't stand to be by myself. I wish I'd started reading the book Motherless Daughters earlier. I wish I'd understood that there were other women out there who'd lost their mothers young who were experiencing the same things in my life that I was experiencing and that I wasn't actually alone. I wish that I didn't turn into that awkward, uncomfortable 16 year old every time I was put into a situation where I didn't know what the outcome would be. I wish I didn't crave control in all things. I wish I could just go with the flow. And so I will practice and I will get better at all of these things. I will hope that you have found some value in what I've had to say and that the people around you are building your esteem. But trust me on the sunscreen.